Welcome back, hosers. Grasshoppers today. And um, let's just get this out of the way. They're foes. They're, grasshoppers are garden foes. If you have a garden, you're not going to have a positive interaction with grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are pretty much an opportunistic pest that eats all living, growing things and um, also the dead stuff. So um, yeah, they are probably the most obvious nuisance in our gardens and um, they can be one of the bigger sources of damage to our crops. Weather is going to be the single strongest determinant of whether or not grasshoppers are going to be a, a big problem for a year. Uh, if you have a year with a particularly warm and dry spring, you'll tend to have more nymphs hatching and they will grow up faster and they will reproduce faster and you get more generations of grasshoppers eating your crops. So um, if you have a cool wet spring you might notice that you have fewer grasshoppers uh, whereas if you have a warm dry spring you'll notice a ton more grasshoppers. The best time to manage grasshoppers is in the early to mid spring before they're a problem, before you're thinking about them. So grasshopper management requires a certain amount of planning ahead and it requires working together as a community. So that's part of what makes them particularly difficult to control is by the time they are a problem that we're seeing, it's too late to do the most effective methods of control. The baits and, and the pesticides and everything, um, even the altering our landscapes to make them less friendly to grasshoppers, those are all things that require broad treatment areas and uh, coordination. Because grasshoppers are highly mobile. I mean, you can, you can see they, they will jump really far. Adults can fly or quite a distance when they want to. Um, so in, unless you've got like city blocks involved in your control effort, they, and you start controlling them while they're young, you're not going to have a great time. You can discourage grasshoppers by keeping your grass and your weeds cut short. You can also use mechanical control in the form of netting over your crops. Of course, this is only going to work for crops that don't require pollination, and the netting has to be there before the grasshopper is there. Because if you put a net over your crops while there are grasshoppers on it, you're no longer protecting your food, you're protecting the grasshoppers from becoming food while they eat your food. Grasshoppers are prey to a lot of organisms. In fact, this is the only continent where humans don't eat grasshoppers. So birds, reptiles, amphibians, uh, small mammals are all on the hunt for grasshoppers and uh, that's part of why they reproduce so plentifully in the spring, why you see millions of grasshoppers emerging from their eggs in the early spring. That's the only way that they can survive to reproduce. If you make your garden a haven for natural predators like uh, praying mantises and, and birds and carnivorous mammals, you will probably see some reduction in the number of grasshoppers, but there are so many by design. I mean, it's, it's an adaptation. They will tend to overwhelm their predators. Now, one uh, one control method that can be up to 50% effective, which is a huge decrease in the total population of grasshoppers, is nolo bait, and that's um, Nosema locuste. It is a protozoa that will, yeah, I've got notes over here. It will infect and kill grasshoppers. And then when other grasshoppers eat the corpses of the infected grasshoppers, it will infect and kill them as well. So it's really effective, but it has to be applied in the spring um, while your population of grasshoppers are nymphs. So this is information I'm giving you too late this year. Because grasshoppers can fly, and they can cover extensive distances. Using pesticides in your garden to control grasshoppers isn't going to be very effective. Even if you were 100% effective in killing off all the grasshoppers in your garden, you would still have 
all of the grasshoppers from your neighboring gardens coming in back to your garden. And um, you're probably going to feel like you don't see any progress. This is why it's so important to work as communities to control grasshoppers and why it's just not going to feel effective working to do that as individuals. Now, none of the pesticides that are available that will work on grasshoppers are targeted specifically to grasshoppers. So whenever you use a pesticide to kill grasshopper pests in your garden, please remember that you will be impacting beneficial insects. You're probably going to be harming some animal life as well. It's not without its costs, and that's beyond the monetary cost of using the pesticide. And the harm that you're doing can include pollinators that you need in your garden to, you know, pollinate your crops. So you could even be shooting yourself in the foot. There is a list of popular pesticides that people can use to control grasshoppers on their crops. Um, there are baits, and these baits are going to be eaten by pretty much any foraging insect or animal. Dusts, uh, there is at least one dust you can apply. Uh, the problem with dusts is that they do not stick to leaves very effectively, and they're going to have to be reapplied every time it rains. And then there are also pesticide sprays that you can apply. Um, there are a lot of fun facts about grasshoppers, and even if you don't like grasshoppers, I mean, learning about them is going to help us control them and understand them and possibly live with them. I, I asked ChatGPT to find 10 fun facts about grasshoppers. So we're going to start with what ChatGPT found. And I fact checked 9 out of 10 of these things. Number one is that grasshoppers belong to the order Orthoptera. Um, that is Latin, I think, for straight wing. And um, they're in there along with crickets and katydids. And they are known for their ability to jump for long distances, thanks to their powerful hind legs. So hopefully most of that wasn't a surprise for you. And that's, that's number one. Number two is that grasshoppers are found on every continent except for Antarctica. They primarily like grasslands and meadows. Probably that's why they are called grasshoppers. Number three is that there are over 11,000 species of grasshoppers worldwide. 11,000. That's about half as many grasshopper species as there are orchid species. It's amazing. They are known for coming in a vast array of shapes and sizes. They can be all sorts of colors, including red and green and blue, but mostly brown. <laughs> so, I mean, there are some beautiful grasshoppers out there in the world. Number four is that grasshoppers are able to see a wide field of vision thanks to their big compound eyes on the sides of their heads. So they can almost have a 360 degree view around them, which is what makes it so hard to sneak up on them and catch them when they're warmed up in the afternoon. In the morning, you'll find it's a lot easier to catch grasshoppers if it's cool because they're cold blooded and they get sluggish and they stop eating when they're cool. Also, they have excellent color perception and amazing depth perception. Number five from ChatGPT is that some grasshoppers are able to produce a sound called stridulation using their legs and or their wings and they use this stridulation to communicate with other grasshoppers and sometimes to find mates. Number six was ChatGPT wanted us to know that grasshoppers are primarily herbivores and they can use their strong jaws or mandibles to help them consume tough plant matter. We had a sudden change of venue because my phone got too hot. And so uh, we're doing this on the patio now. All right, so number seven, according to ChatGPT, is um, the fact that grasshoppers undergo incomplete metamorphosis. So they have three life stages, the egg, the nymph, and the adult. Uh, nymphs look just like adult grasshoppers, except they don't have fully developed wings. So if you're like, is that a nymph or an adult? Look at the wings. They go all the way down to the end of their butt. It's an adult. Number eight is that um, grasshoppers can regenerate lost limbs, which is kind of cool. Whenever a grasshopper molts, it will come out of its um, old skin with new limbs. Pretty cool. Kind of wish I had that ability. Number nine, according to ChatGPT, is that lots of animals eat grasshoppers. So yeah, we already went over that. 
they are a crucial part of the ecosystem. No matter how upset they make us by eating our food, they, they are an important part of the world. Number 10, according to ChatGPT, and this is the one I couldn't check, uh, fact check, is that grasshoppers are, have been used symbolically in a lot of cultures throughout history. Um, they tend to be associated with abundance or persistence or sometimes even rebellion. In some cultures, they're considered symbols of good luck. Now, there are some facts that ChatGPT missed, and some of them I think are quite cool. So number one for me is that band-winged grasshoppers are generally not considered pests because they prefer to hang out in grassy areas that we're not using, so, so actual wild grasslands. And they have beautifully colored wings. They can come in shades of yellow or orange-red or sometimes even kind of a purple color. Wow, that camera's really fluctuating. Um, so male banded winged grasshoppers will jump into the air and make a clicking noise in flight. It's not a noise they always make while flying. It's to attract the attention of potential mates. Now, while they're jumping to attract mates, they are incredibly vulnerable to predators. So they're doing a lot for love. Meatloaf would be proud of them. Okay, fact number two is that and most of you should know this, but it's still cool. Grasshoppers can do a thing called defensive regurgitation when they're threatened. They will spit up digestive juices and partially digested food to make themselves less appealing as food. Another thing I think is cool is that all locusts are grasshoppers, but not all grasshoppers are locusts. Because I was kind of wondering, what is the difference between a grasshopper and a locust? Because, you know, they're different, but how? Um, so the difference is that um, a locust is a grasshopper that has two different types of behavior depending on its population density. So um, regular grasshoppers just chill and do regular grasshopper stuff. They're anarchists, they're foraging, that's it. Locusts, after a certain population density, will change into a swarm from hell, as featured in the Exorcist sequel. Uh, so another thing I thought was cool is that they can carry a parasite called a horsehair worm that is many times the length of their body. It's just in there all knotted up. So that's kind of why it's also called the Gordian worm. Um, when the worm has matured, they will take control of the grasshopper's behavior and they will make it want to go into water. So the grasshopper will jump into water. As soon as that grasshopper gets wet, the worm bursts out of the grasshopper into the water to carry out the adult side of its life cycle. So this big, I mean, they can be this long. Horsehair worms are considered beneficial because they do kill some grasshoppers. Yay, go worms. They do not harm humans. So if you see a horsehair worm, please consider um, not killing it because it's killing grasshoppers, and we love that. So that is all the fun facts I have for you today. I hope you learned something. Um, remember, if you do use any pesticides against grasshoppers, please do it responsibly, and remember that you're probably wasting their time because even once you've killed them all in your garden, they can fly in from other gardens. So um, really, at this point in this year, all we can do is plan for next year. Thank you for joining me in my garden, and I hope you have a wonderful time in your own.